Welcome back. You're tuned in here with Raider Dave here at Grindcast Media, straight out the IE, the Inland Empire, straight out of Southern California. It's a Monday. We're about to follow up on these key defensive free agent signings that the Raiders have made in the past month. All six, man, key contributors into abiding by the Al Davis creed in the quarterback must go down, and he must go down hard. So keep in mind, not last year, man, the Raiders, not one linebacker from the Oakland Raiders last year had a sack. So things are about to change. We got some key pieces here for Paul Gunther so he can operate the scheme as needed. We're going to get into this after the break. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. Smash that like button. I'll see you after the break. So we'll just set it off right here with inside linebacker Corey Littleton. He's the biggest signing of the offseason. This is the player that we all wanted, man. Um, he's a local Southern California kid out here, man. He played at Mount Miguel down in San Diego area out there in the Sweetwater area. And it was cool, man, because like I said, I get to listen to the interviews out here. I'm in, in between San Diego, L.A., so I kind of work out of San Diego sometimes, work in the L.A. area sometimes. So wherever I be, man, some, I'm listening to sports radio, man. I picked up a few interviews, man. He's a great interview, man. High-energy guy. And... Uh, uh, you know, just the entire year knowing that he was going to be a free agent, he was the perfect fit for this defense, what the Raiders are trying to uh, accomplish over there in Las Vegas now because he's a taller linebacker. Um, he's nifty, man. I I'm just going to use like his feet are nifty, man, and how he keeps his feet within his shoulders and how he squares up ball carriers and how he defends uh, passes in coverage because he's pretty good in coverage. I know so we'll just jump right into his stats, man. This is Sports Info Solutions. This is the site that I like to use. Their subscription is really expensive, just so you guys know, man. It's like 100 bucks. Some of their packages are like 200 bucks a month. A lot of people jump into the bike, man, do you, do you check PFF grades and all that? I do, but I just don't use PFF grades as an ultimate grade because sometimes you just see a player and you see that he can tackle and you see that he's in proper form, and that's what I'm looking for, man. I'm a guy that looks for proper fundamentals in a player, man, a guy that just knows how to play basic football you know i'm not trying to get ahead of myself here on this thing man so uh once again man I, so i'm just going to get into some of these basic stats so i hope i hope these are stats that you guys can enjoy but uh just getting into this man so we got 257 tackles combined over uh two seasons in uh 16 games each you know he didn't miss a game in those two seasons you know earned his way into the starting role eight of those tackles were for a loss so throw in a couple forced fumbles on top of that and here's the key here's what i've been talking about here's what we've all been talking about as getting after the quarterback the Raider we all want defenders that can get after the quarterback and here's where it here's the here's the nugget right here is he had 25 quarterback pressures and seven and a half sacks in those combined seasons so last year he had three and a half sacks one more reminder the Raiders linebackers in 2019 had zero a whopping zero you know that's not a knock on any linebacker that's really played in a Raider uniform prior to that because most of the Raiders linebackers they've had in place the last few years, aside from Vontez Perfect, who who looked like he was evolving well in the defense, unfortunately the league's got a bullseye on his he's got a bullseye on his back in the NFL. That's an unfortunate situation. But you know, the Raiders have key pieces in place. And you know, Tier Whitehead just wasn't that guy. And he didn't take it to that next level and all the best to him in his career. But this is a huge upgrade for the Raiders right here with Corey Littleton because once again, he is effective getting after the quarterback. I know he played in a different defense with the Rams. You got Wade Wilson. You got Aaron Donald playing in front of him. He had, um, uh, uh, there was a time he had to keep to lead there playing with him. But even uh, last year, Jalen Ramsey. So they do have some pieces there. You know, so factoring all that in, Corey Littleton, is he going to be the key piece to this defense? Yes, he will be a key piece to this defense. I still do think they need to go get a linebacker early on in the draft. We need to evolve somewhere like a natural-born leader for the defense. And uh, maybe Jonathan Abram is that guy. I don't know. But the Raiders are starting to develop some alpha dogs on this defense. And uh, it's going to be quite a sight to see if they can reshape this thing in one offseason. So let's get into our next player here in Nick Kwiatkowski, man, from the Chicago Bears. Um you know, another three-year deal right here. Uh, just as we had talked up uh, Corey, Corey Littleton with the quarterback pressures and sacks, uh, Kwiatkowski, man, he wasn't a full-time starter in that Bears defense. But when he stepped up is when his number got called, man. And so he started eight games last year. We'll get into his stats right here. Let me just give me a second here. 
You know, so in, in, and in those eight games, man, so he had 75 tackles last year, 5-4 a loss, one forced fumble, 11 quarterback pressures with three sacks. So he shows up well in coverage categories. Um, you know, add in that one interception there last year as well. Uh, but most importantly, he gets hits on the quarterback and the pressure rate indicates that. Now check out that pressure rate over there. If you have any questions on these stats, I can put them in the uh, the pin. So if you have any questions on how they're broken down, I can kind of break them down for you real quick. Most of the stat chart that I go off of is tackling, pass rush, and coverage. These are the three ingredients I'm looking for in a defense, especially at the linebacker position because that's been the biggest hole in this defense. Uh, but then again, you got the advanced defensive stats with snaps, deserved catch percentages, pass breakups, tackling, you know, tackling, you know, you got so Low. You know, they even exclude the special teams tackles, which is what I like. So that way shit don't get overblown. But uh, anyway, you know, you got your pass rush, your hits, your hurries, your knockdowns, your pressures, your passes, uh, batted passes at the line with all the percentages, baby. So next player is Carl Nassib, man. He gets a three-year deal. This will be his third team going into his fifth year. Um, he's had limited playing time. However, he has productive numbers. Another guy who gets after the quarterback. This is a guy who also Mike Mayock likes a lot but with that said we're gonna let mike mayock give you his insight on it man this is mike mayock on draft day his older brother is ryan nasa he played high school football at malvern prep where my son played i've seen this kid play for a lot of years get a monster fifth year my comparison is jared allen he has no clue what he's doing yet but he's got length and he plays hard now not only was this kid not recruited out of high school, he didn't start one high school football game. He's now six foot seven, 276 pounds, with a relentless motor like you cannot believe. So the pick by Cleveland in this location doesn't surprise me because he's a really good edge rusher with an upside. I thought a 4-3 team would take him, not a 3-4 team. All right, well said, Mike Mayock, man. So let's get into this here. Jeff Heath, man, I like this signing, man. This actually healed the wound from losing Carl Joseph, um, you know, right here. Because I do, I'm a fan of Carl Joseph, man. I just, I'm, I'm a big fan of the hitters that play safety in the NFL. I think it's the way it should be. It's the way it was meant to be. Don't get me wrong. There's some hybrid safeties out there who have been impressive these last 10, 15 years. I just grew up on guys like Ronnie Lott. You know, remember Eric Turner? Remember Eric Turner was one of my favorite safeties for the Raiders? You know, so as you already know, as I mentioned earlier, Heath is a hitter. Not quite the pop as I'd mentioned with Carl Joseph, and I do think um, he's just a cheaper version, to be honest. Um, he's a little bit bigger, of course. Well, actually, he's a lot, a lot taller than Carl Joseph. He's a little bit bigger, so... Uh, we get to see how that plays out in coverage, you know, and that's been the concern with Carl Joseph. That's what Raider fans' arguments, some Raider fans that weren't in favor of Carl Joseph, that thought maybe he was too short out there. Some feel the same way with LaMarcus Joyner. Those guys stand around 5'8", 5'9". I mean, I've seen actually some people have them listed at 5'8". I think they're realistically about 5'9". Carl Joseph seems like a, he plays like a 5'10 safety in my opinion, but aside from all that, we get to see how much of a difference this makes in coverage because that was the the argument, you know, as it pertains to covering tight ends and and such. You know, now the Raiders got a, a taller linebacker and Corey Littleton. You got a taller, strong safety and Jeff Heath. Who, how much playing time is he going to get? You know, I've mentioned earlier. I truly believe the Raiders are going to carry five safeties on this roster for many reasons, man. Because that four-three defense, you know, they're replacing a linebacker a lot of times with safety. You know, you're going to see him a lot in, in that nickel package. Sometimes three down sets, four down sets. Gunther's going to mix it up more with more personnel, and who knows what Rod Marinelli's spitting in his ear, you know, because he could be, uh, you know, the next man in line to be the defensive coordinator for the Raiders. He's already getting players from his defense in uh, Dallas. So, um, but once again, about four inches taller than Carl Joseph, I guess you could say, give or take. Um, but uh, one thing, he, he has shorter arm length than Joseph. So, uh, all in all, I'm just going to put it like this, very similar players. Uh, Jeff Heath will lay the wood. He does get after the quarterback. Um, you know, he doesn't have that, so to say, on the stat sheet, but he does get pressure. Um, so moving on here, let's get to uh, Eli Apple right here, man. So Eli Apple, one-year deal. He's only 24, as I'd mentioned earlier. 
Um, who could really be upset, though? I mean, getting an Ohio State defensive back. I'll say something real quick. I think he's an upgrade over Gary and Conley. We drafted Jerry and Gary and Conley in the first round. I think this is a better risk reward than a Gary and Conley right here with Eli Apple. There's a lot of upside. This guy's got to get his career in full. You know, he's here. This one year deal is to jumpstart his career. I'll just put it that way. Um, injuries, changing teams early in his career may have been a distraction, but. Last year, he did have a nice bounce back year. He started in all, uh, you know, not all games, but he started in 15 games, allowing a 56.1 completion percentage. Factor in, he had 58 tackles. Remember, I draw, drew up uh, Trayvon Mullen stats. These are somewhat similar. Somewhat, you know. Um, he had four passes defended. Um, he had a forced fumble. Um, so year five of, of Eli Apple's career, is one he knows is crucial to live up to being a formal top 10 pick. So this is a one-year deal. This is a prove-it deal. And, um, you know, once again, this guy has a great background coming out of Ohio State. He hasn't been a complete bust. It only remains to be seen. All right, so last, man, Malik Collins. This is one of my favorite signings of the offseason, aside from uh, Corey Littleton. You know, he's an intriguing player, man. And, of course, Rod Marinelli, he had the low. He had the in on that. He knew he, he was getting right here with Malik Collins. But, uh, once again, this guy is a potential pocket breaker. Now, I do have a defensive tackle in the draft. I'm not going to name him yet that I really want the Raiders to go after. I want him to trade back and get him possibly in the second round. Maybe he's there in the third round. I have a player who I'm comparing to Chris Jones, who I think could be electric in the Raiders' defense. I'm going to hold off on that for draft day. But... Man, the, you know, I like the fact that they got Malik Collins, and I, I've, I don't know, man. I don't know with PJ Hall what's gonna, what that's gonna result. I mean, these guys are gonna get pushed this, uh, this off season. You know, if there's an off season, if there's a competitive training camp, we don't know that yet. But, you know, adding another piece, a, a key defensive tackle, man. You know, somebody's gonna get weeded out in that mix. Uh, but, you know, you just basically look at his pass totals across the board. In 2019 especially, he really turned it up, man, and he's getting after the quarterback. Those quarterback pressures all show the hurries, the hits, the knockdowns. You know, he gets after the quarterback, and this is the primary goal in building a defense is rattling the quarterback, man. That's what I've been saying all year. You know, so we've heard it all, man. We've heard it all. The Raiders, they got to get players that can cover the tight end. They got to, you know, they need more pass rush help. That's where I stand, man. Get more pass rush help. Get players that are instinctive, that want to get after the quarterback, or if something's coming their way, they want to lay the hit and they want to send a message to the opposing offense because this is an offensive-driven league and you got to rattle these quarterbacks and you got to disrupt play calls. And not only that, defensive coordinators need personnel. They need to be able to rotate guys. They need to be able to get the personnel to fit their uh, scheme sets on the field. This is a very important you know, off season so far. I mean, these are key signings. You know, once again, I like every piece. You know, you're getting the key pieces in place to give Paul Gunther a sporting chance so he can execute his scheme on the football field. We got I got my fingers crossed right now because number one right now is pu public health. We need to focus on that. We get this public health thing under control, and you know what we can do, man? We can have a football season come September, man. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm hoping for. I hope everything gets back to normal. Um, once again, prayers worldwide. Much love, Raider Nation. I'm Raider Dave. This is Grimecast Media. If you haven't already, man, smash that like button. Smash the subscribe. Let's get dialed in, dude. I'm out. Peace.